the same way that you saw me express my love to my wife, I need good friendships, I need good fellowships, I need good relationships. And I don't believe that every ship has to be toxic. You have to hear me. It is God's will that we live in peace. He does not want you living in hell in your home. He does not want you to have broken friendships and relationships with people. Even if he allows a season of breaking, he also provides a season to make that thing up. You have to hear me. Um, today we want to talk about the um, unexpected love when it comes to relationships, when it comes to your friendships. Some of y'all are going to have to learn how to be a good friend. Come on here. You're going to have to learn how to, watch me, to accept the fact that you can be happy for the rest of your life. You will not live in a toxic environment. Come on here. He, my peace, I leave with you. And I need you to know, I decree and I declare that this is going to be one of the most peaceful years in every area of your life. You're going to work in peace. You're going to live in peace. You're going to go out to dinner in peace. It is his will that you be at peace. You have to hear me. When we were in college, they would give us something called a care package. Before we left for college, they would throw us a trunk party. And what they would do is that they would put everything inside the trunk that you needed to survive on where you were going. When you got a care package, they would leave something on your, on your dormitory door and say, you have a box at the post office. And you would get excited because you knew it was going to be some oodles and noodles. Come on here. Some peanut butter and jelly. Come on here. Some sardines and some crackers. Oh, I can't stand this younger generation. Those were what we call Happy Meals. Oh, look at here. And it was all sent to you and it had your name on it. It was a box that was prepared to make sure that you were good. And I came to let everyone know today that God is about to give you revelation on the box that you're preparing and the box that's being prepared for you. The next connection is not going to be an empty box. You're going to meet somebody that's going to have some stuff in their box that you might not have in your box. But watch me. And I might have some stuff in my box that you don't have in your box. So when I get with you, you're not going to drain me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We're going to hook up and we're going to shake our boxes together. Oh, it's about to be a jack in the box. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. I need you to just check to make sure you sit next to somebody that got a box. I don't care if your box ain't nothing but a praise, but I cannot be around people who are void and empty. I need to be around people who are creative. I need to be around people who are at peace. I need to be around people who want me to make it. I don't need to be around somebody who got a box full of jealousy and envy, but I need to make sure that I got a celebrating person next to me. I need you to check to make sure you sit in the box section. How do you know they got a box? I can tell you got a box because ain't nobody got to pump you or prime you. When we start shaking in your box, your box start releasing a sound. Come on, touch your neighbor, say, I got my box, I got my box. So today we're going to talk about two people who divinely hook up and these two people produce something that is great. It is Isaac and Rebecca. Isaac could have married anybody, but he had to marry somebody, pay attention, who could hold double. Come on here. Because she was going to have to hold twins. And for some of y'all, who you going to meet has to be able to hold what you're going to produce. Come on here. The Bible said, watch me, that, watch me, Esau, one of the twins, was the father of the Edomites and the Amalekites. Watch me. And then Jacob basically produced the 12 tribes of Israel. And out of one of the tribes, Judah is the one that God sent the Messiah through. But it can't happen until Isaac and Rebekah hook up. What am I trying to say to you? It is time for you to meet with your purpose. 
it is time for you to connect with your destiny. It is bigger than you could ever imagine. That's why you got to make sure you meet the right people, especially in this season in your life. I don't have time to be tricked no more. I don't have time to waste time, but I need God to order my steps to make sure that I'm around the right people that got the right stuff in them. When I come to church, I need to even make sure that I'm sitting next to the right people. I don't need to be in the spectating section. I don't need to be in the Facebook section. I don't need to be in the inner Graham DM section. I need to be in the section of those that are sitting on the edge of their seat waiting on God to fill their box up. Come on, yeah. Come on, y'all. Let's just release a prophetic word on the building and in the screen, on the screen. Can everybody just look at somebody and say, it's your time and your season for all your ships to work out. <laughs> it's your time and your season for all your ships, your friendships, your relationships, your stewardships, your all your ships are about to sail in. I need somebody. Okay. Let me calm down. I need to calm down. Come on here. I'm speaking to somebody. You're going to have a well-balanced life. Watch me. It ain't going to be that. Every area got to come up. Y'all ain't saying that to me. You and your friends are about to get along. You and your family are about to get along. You're going to stop sleeping with the enemy. Your house is about to be cleared out. Every demonic spirit is about to get out of all your ships. And I came to tell you that he's about to fill your box to make sure that when you meet them, box going to just start shaking come on come on come on come on speak it right now all my ships are about to Woo. all of them all of them all of them hey shake it run that up all of them Oh, my business bit partner's about to come in place. My friends are about to come in alignment. Come on here. It cannot be done by you alone. It is not done by you alone. Allow me to show you what, what, what they were prepared for. The Bible says in Genesis 24 and 67, Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah and he married her let me close this circle come on here there are no more options and he married Rebecca so she became who he needed come on here and what you need is about to enter into your life. And she became his wife. It ain't that she was the only woman either, but she was the one he needed to produce purpose and destiny. Come on here, watch me. And he loved her. You don't have to search for love. Your search is about to be over. Come on here. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death, which means that all of your consolation and your comfort is about to come from your ships. You ain't got to call a witch, a warlock, a fortune teller, but everything you need is about to find you. I'm at the top of the year demanding your year to fall in line. Who am I talking to? Who's ready for God to give you everything you need because the devil been trying to trick you out here, making you think that you by yourself. I cancel every lie that the devil been telling you. Uh oh I cancel the spirit of isolation. I cancel the spirit of suicide and I shut. Let's go. Slide down, if you will, and I want you to get this revelation. If you go over to 25 and 20, I've read the Bible, but this thing leaped at me because I'm watching those that are in their late teens, early 20s, and their 30s be impatient. But the Bible shows us in Genesis 25 and 20, and Isaac was 40 years 
old when he married Rebecca because in his 40s is when he became settled. In his 20s, we don't know what he was doing. In his 30s, things start winding down. But in his 40s, the plane is landed, and now she's ready to get on board. Is there anybody? I don't have time to be running around in the air with you. I need your plane to land so we could ride into our future together. Who am I talking to? So I came to tell some of you 20s and 30s, calm down. It's about to settle down. And everything is about to be brought to you. Oh, I need to calm down. I need to calm down. So, ready? So, question. What happened before all of this? We see a bride and a groom, but we don't know the preparation. And I came to say to some of you all that he's literally preparing you. And I'm about to show you your care package of everything that God has been put in your box to make sure that you meet the right one. You have been being prepared for your future. Hear me clearly. You have not wasted time. Mm. Let's shut this mouth of this demon right now. You have not wasted time, and you are not too old. As a matter of fact, you right on time. Come on here. Millions didn't make it. Aren't you glad you did? Aren't you glad you didn't marry who you wanted to marry? Aren't you glad they quit you? Aren't you glad they fired you? Aren't you glad they decided that they didn't want to be bothered with you? Because because when your seat became empty, it allowed the right person to sit in the seat. Those of you that know that the past few years have been a little testing and a trial, I need to hear your worship like you know that something is about to go down in your life. I have already begun to shake your body box if you could pick up on anything that I said I need you to validate this thing with your worship if you don't hear feel me don't say nothing but those of y'all that believe that God is up to something bigger better and greater let me say that again those of y'all that believe that God is up to something bigger better and greater I need your worship to reflect it right here those of you watch me we don't wait on God to fill the box we worship him while we know he's up to something I need you to lift your hands bigger better and greater bigger better and greater bigger better and greater bigger better and greater give me five seconds if you expecting bigger better and greater come on come on do me a favor fist bump somebody say you're being prepared 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 all right so if you if you back this up and if you go to the 24th chapter in Genesis, you'll be, if, you, if you really zone in, you really see how God began to align things to make sure that these two got together. You have to hear me. God began to align things to make sure that these two got together. For everyone in the sound of my voice, and I pray that you can really hear my heart because I feel like I am on assignment today, that things are being prepared for you. Mm. Everything is about to align itself. Mm. Even stuff that you didn't see coming is about to rock your world. Because mm. he got to let you know that he didn't forget about you. And this is why the enemy did everything he could to make some of y'all think that it'll never happen. But hello, I'm so glad you made it to 222. Mm. Oh my God, it's about to go down in your life. Can you open your mouth and make this divine com com confirmation? Everything is falling in line. Come on here, I need you to say it. Everything is falling in line. Everything is being prepared for me. Everything that they need, he's putting in me. He's getting me ready for my next business partner. He's getting me ready for my friendships. He's getting me. So the care package. The first thing that we see here is that there is a village involved. Bible says, you ready? In, in, in 24 and 1, Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said,
to the senior servant in his household. Not just any servant, the senior servant in his household. The one who is in charge of all that he had. Put your hand under my thigh and I need you to go into agreement with me. That, watch me, that my son will not marry somebody that is from the land of the Canaanites. I need you to promise me that what I birth won't go get something that don't match what he's expecting. Come on here. And it didn't just stop with the father. There is a village involved. And I came to let some of y'all, watch me, stop hiding it. Bring it out to your village and let everybody see what you're looking at. Can I give you the, 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 how this thing moved about? Bring it up on the screen. The Bible says Abraham talked to the servant. Watch me. And then the servant went on the road and met Rebecca at the well. Rebecca then ran back and told her family, check out this nose ring I got in my nose and this bracelet on my wrist. Come on here. And a family ran to see the servant. Then the servant, come on here. Then the family talked to Rebecca. Watch me. And then Rebecca talked to the servant. All before Isaac and Rebecca got to talk. It was a whole lot of other conversation going on behind the scene to make sure that they meet each other. In other words, there's a village that, that want to see you make it. We're not talking about no haters. We're not talking about somebody who's trying to stop you. We're talking about people who can see what you can't see. We're talking about people who want that God want to bring together. And the only reason him bringing them together is so that you could get what you supposed to have. You, my brothers and my sisters, your village is needed. You need people to bring your name up when you ain't nowhere around. You need people to speak well of you. You need somebody to put your name in the atmosphere. You don't want to feel like every time you got to do everything for yourself. But I decree and I declare that God's about to bring you some pushers. God's about to bring you somebody that's going to bring your name up at dinner. God's going to make somebody post you that you didn't even know was about to be brought up. Do me a favor. I want to make sure that you sit next to a pusher. Ask your neighbor, what's your name? Because I'm about to release your name in the atmosphere. And I'm going to pray that when I release your name, that your name go through your village and that they understand that favor's about to come in their direction. Come on, y'all. I call your village to catch your name. I call your village to bring your name but when you're not even there I pray that your village posts you and you ain't got to post yourself do me a favor ask them their name and then on the count of three I need you to release their name hey Facebook hey 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 YouTube look on the screen and find somebody's name and then I need you to type their name on the screen what am I trying to do I am encouraging your village uh, to keep bringing you up uh, I'm encouraging your village uh, to keep speaking well of you watch me hear me clearly God's about to bring your village around you. You're going to be like David in a cave. And there appeared unto David 400 men that became his mighty men of valor. Who's around you is about to find you. On the count of three, release their name. One, two, three. Come on, I pull the frame out. And on the frame, you'll see a picture of a family, but there's a blank space right there, which means that somebody else is about to be put in the picture. I decree and I declare the next one going to be the right one that's supposed to be in your circle. You don't need another backstabber. You don't need another hater. You don't need another jealous person around you. You need somebody that's going to make sure that they talk to the right one. You need Abraham to talk to the servant. You need the servant to talk to Rebecca. You need Rebecca to talk to the family. You need the family to talk to the servant. You need the family to talk to Rebecca. You need Rebecca to talk to the servant. And then the one you're supposed to meet, you're going to meet. Y'all know what I just said. I said, you need Abraham to talk to the servant. I need the servant to talk to Rebecca. I need Rebecca to talk to her family. I need the family to talk to the servant. I need the family to talk to Rebecca. I need Rebecca to talk to the servant. And then eventually you're going to meet who you're supposed to meet. Let the chatter begin. I need Abraham to talk to the servant. I need the servant to talk to Rebecca. I need Rebecca to talk to her family. I need the family to talk to the servant. I need the family to talk to Rebecca. I need Rebecca to talk to the servant. And then you gonna meet who you supposed to meet. Come on, y'all. 
Lean to somebody and say, your name is being brought up. And it's not being brought up in a bad way either. You're going to walk into the right interview. You're going to go on the right date. You're going to sit at the right table. How did you get here? Abraham talked to the servant, then the servant talked to Rebecca, then Rebecca talked to her family, then the family talked to the servant, and then the family talked to Rebecca, then Rebecca talked to the servant, and then I met you. In the spirit, I command your hookups to meet each other. I command Abraham to talk to the servant. I command the servant to talk to Rebecca. I command Rebecca to talk to the family. I command the family to talk to the servant. I command the family to talk to Rebecca. I command Rebecca to talk to the servant. And now I command you to meet who you supposed. You didn't just pop up. It was a lot of pushing going on behind you. Come on, y'all. Oh, wait till you see. Tell somebody your circle is tight. Come on, put that on the screen. My circle is tight. I'm about to be introduced to somebody, but it's going to take a few more conversations before I meet them. Stop, stop. Have a seat. Have a seat. Come on, say my circle is tight. I need Abraham to talk to the servant, then I need the servant to talk to Rebecca, then I need Rebecca to talk to her family, then I need the family to talk to the servant, then I need the family to talk to Rebecca, then I need Rebecca to talk to the servant, then finally, everything can come together. Now you gotta get the next thing in the box. You cannot have a box without prayer. Watch me, look at me. And I'm not talking about praying for yourself. God has to put some people around you that are intercessors that could pick up and pray for you when they don't even, when you don't even know they're praying for you. Come on here. You don't need another BFF. You need an intercessor. You, you don't need somebody to tell your problems to. You need somebody that when they, when they call on God, he's familiar with their voice. Can I, can, I, can I give you some revelation? I want you, come on, I want you to see this about prayer in the box. The Bible says, the Bible says, this is, this is, the Bible says, then he prayed. Who is he? This is the servant praying. You have to hear me. The first one to actually go into prayer was Abraham. Abraham told the servant, put your hand under my thigh. Who is he praying for? He praying for Isaac. Abraham, Isaac ain't praying. Look at me. Isaac is not praying. It is Abraham that is touching a green for Isaac. And when he touched and agrees with the servant, the Bible says, then the servant grabbed the torch to be the prayer warrior. Then he prayed, oh Lord, watch this prayer. God of my master, Abraham, make me successful today, not for me, and show kindness to my master Abraham. Abraham interceded for Isaac. Now the servant is interceding for Abraham that God would do it because Abraham asked for it. Y'all better hear me. You need some people that will get between you and God and say, God, do me a favor. Y'all better hear me. You need some intercessors. You need somebody that'll bring your name up to God and don't want credit. Don't want to boast you only got it because I prayed for you. No, I need somebody that won't even tell me you prayed. You'll just praise. Okay. Touch your neighbor and say, you need some intercessors. Who just, you need some intercessors. 
you need some intercessors. Uh-huh. Now we're going to go a little natural. We're going to go a little natural. And I need to put a mirror up here because I'm going to need you to check yourself before you go meet who you're supposed to meet. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. We do not need to see you with your bonnet on your head. We do not need to see you outside in pajamas. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me, but we need you to walk by the mirror and make sure you straight because you don't know who you going to meet. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I need you to comb your head before you go out. If you don't comb it, I need you to twist it like I did mine. I need you to get a line because your head and make sure it made it down to your back. I need you to make sure you tight that you look good because they might not know you, but they're going to see you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me and I need you to make sure you look good you might not have no money you might have had to get your clothes from the second hand store but when you put it on it looked like it came from Neiman Marcus it looked like it is first class won't nobody know that you did get a second hand unless you tell them I need you to hear me clearly right now because some of y'all you have, you did run well but who did hinder you I need you to get your game back I need you to get your swagger back I need you to look like you got a million dollars and you ain't got a dime in the bank. I need you to look like every time you step out the door, you modeling. I need you to look like every street is a runway. I need you to walk like your name Beyonce. I need you to walk like you got it going on. I need you to keep your body in line. I need you to keep your hair done. I ain't just talking to the women. I'm talking to the brothers too. I need you to make sure you sharp. I need you to hold your gut in. I need you to make Make sure you got yourself together. I need you to get your shoes shine. I need you to have a nice watch. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I need you to make sure you smell good. You too old to be walking around here smelling like baby oil. Look. I need you to smell like a grown man up in here. I need. Touch your neighbor say, I need you to smell like where you're going. I need you to smell like where you're going. I need you to look like you got it, even if you don't have it. And the Bible says something. You ready? Let's go. Let's go. Appearance. Your appearance has to be straight in the box. Your appearance has to be good in the box. The Bible says that, look how the Bible described Rebecca. The woman was very, not just beautiful, but very beautiful. Watch me, she could have been ugly to somebody else, but to the one who was supposed to find her. Come on here. God will make somebody look ugly until you see them. Y'all ain't saying that to me. And then he'll remove the scales from your eyes. And what looked like another man's trash is about to be your treasure. Ah, y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. Come on here, I need you to make sure you tight. And the Bible says, and when they looked at Rebecca, she was a very, everybody say, looked at her. Wasn't nobody praying, wasn't nobody speaking in tongues, wasn't nobody rolling in the floor. He just looked at her. You better hear me? Everybody hear me? When we meet you, we don't meet your Holy Ghost. When we meet you, we don't meet your gift. When we meet you, we see you. Come on here. After I see you, then I get to know you. But I need you to be pleasing to the eye. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me because we in a raggedy generation right now. You just think that you can go anywhere. When we were growing up, even if you went on a job interview, you had to look like you already had the job. You didn't come in there with no sweatpants on and no gym shoes. You look like you own the company. You look like you ready to work. And there's a spirit of lots of days ago going around. People don't want to look like nothing but I rebuke the spirit of raggedy. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I command you to comb your hair. I command you to put on nice clothes. I rebuke you for coming out of the house with pajamas on. I'm just going to run up to Walgreens. But somebody might be on the wall waiting on you to step into the green. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Why, you... What you doing? I'm checking the mirror to make sure I look good. Because what? watch me, watch me, before you know me, you're going to see me. 
and God giving me everything I need. I don't care if you big, you better be good looking big. Darling, you will never be small another day in your life, but let it go on record. You're the finest big person I've ever met in my life. You and got confidence to put your clothes on and wish a ninja would say something. I need you to nudge your neighbor and say, you look good. Come on, prophesy. Even if they don't look good, I need you to prophesy. Say, you look And it's not just your appearance. He going to cover your name. Come on here. He going to cover your name. He going to cover your reputation. Come on, let's bring the scripture back up. The Bible says she was a very beautiful, very beautiful, and, and a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. Some of y'all got quiet. It starts sliding down in your seat when I said virgin. Please hear me clearly. You won't read what the Bible said that Isaac was a virgin. Because mm -mm. ain't no telling what he been doing that through them Canaanites. Uh, Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. But somebody got to be clean up in here. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. And some of y'all, you're not, a, you know, you're not a virgin. Look at me. Come on, bring that camera in because I got to say this for confidence. I'm about to give you hope. I'm about to make you believe that God did, God did it again. You what I call, pull it up, a born again. A born again version. Oh, he's been washed by the blood. We can't even find who you slept with. I wish I had somebody that know that he's... There's no lie you won't tear down. Come on, y'all. I need you to touch somebody. Say, you've been washed in the blood. You've been washed in the blood. Uh-huh. All your pics have been erased. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. We can't find nothing on the internet but you, but your present, your past has disappeared. You look good, and you got a good name. You got a good name. You ain't been sleeping with everybody. Because don't forget, if you've been sleeping with everybody... Abraham going to talk to the servant, then the servant going to talk to Rebecca, then Rebecca going to talk to her family, then her family going to talk to the servant, then the family going to talk to Rebecca, and then Rebecca going to talk to the servant, and we got to make sure that you never smash one of the homies. And if you did, the homie did. This is for my homie. Your name is cleared. Your reputation is good. Your credit is cleared. Everything in your past is no longer following you. Okay, we got, the, we, got, we got the mirror. Okay, we got the circle. We got the prayer. We got the appearance. We got your name covered. We got, let's see, we got your, everybody say, my, my circle is good. My intercessors are in place. And my appearance match my purpose. Ooh. Ooh. Now you got to get me. You got to get this one. For some of y'all, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, you're going to reap if you faint not. Your labor has not been in vain. Come on here. Everything that you've been working on has prepared you for your now. Come on here. Come on here. And I'm going to talk to those of you all that watch me, watch me, watch me. Part of your outfit has been an apron because God has used you to serve people. Come on here. And your servitude is about to be paid off. Y'all ain't saying that to me. I mean he's about to hook you up. Your servitude is about to be paid off. Off. You always helping people. You always looking out for people. And you've been asking yourself, well, when's somebody going to look out for me? What if I told you that he held it up because he didn't want you getting a small package? He want to go exceedingly and abundantly above you could... Come on here. I, every servant in the building, I need you to watch me. I need you to lift your hands and open your mouth and worship God for five seconds.
to your neighbor, how can I serve you? Come on, ask somebody, how can I serve you? Come on here. I need you to look around and say, I'm about to serve this entire section. I'm about to, uh, when, I, when I release a praise, my praise is going to serve this whole section. Come on here. How can, I, how, how, how can I help you? Can I take your orders, please? You can't take advantage of me. You can only set me up for what God get in store for me. And I need to let some of y'all know he gave you a spirit of servitude because you serving is about to make your blessing come in your direction. Watch this, watch this. Ready? You got to read the scripture. Come on, bring it up on the screen. Bring it up on the screen. Y'all got to cover this hole up in the back of my head. I just talked about appearance. I got to make Anna Hannah think ain't no hair falling up out of my head. Touch your neighbor say, stop everything and fix yourself because somebody looking for you. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Stop everything. Don't be ashamed. Pull your slip down. Ain't nobody... Look. Pull your socks up. Don't do Ooh, don't that look better? Look at that. Watch, watch. Everybody watch server two. You got to watch server two. This is a characteristic that everybody should look for. Watch me. Not just in marriage, but even in your friendships. You got to make sure that you're not around stingy people. You got to make sure you're not around just takers. People that's always, always got their hand out. Watch me. Watch, watch Rebecca without anybody asking. Without anybody asking. The Bible said after she had given him who? A drink. Who was that? The servant? She gave the man a drink. He, all he asked for was a drink. Watch me. And she said, I'll draw water for your camels too. I'm not just going to make sure you drink. I'm going to make sure your transportation is straight. I'm going to give you a little gas money until they had enough to drink. Come on, let's go to the next verse. Come on, go to the verse. So she quickly emptied her jar into the throw, ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all of his cameras. The girl is working. She is moving. Watch me. She's not sitting down waiting on somebody to serve her, but she is active. Watch me. Her energy is on Ten. Watch me. And she is her wife. Without saying a word, pay attention to this. A man, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made, watch me, without saying a word. Watch me. Some of y'all keep waiting on people to compliment you for your servitude. But God said, He's making everybody hold their word. Because while you moving, somebody going to see you doing you doing you. This is your heart makeup. This is what you do. Even when you tired, you always encourage somebody. You always looking out for somebody. Please listen to me and I need you not to change. I need you to not let the people that you think took advantage of you change you from wearing your apron. I need you to keep serving until the Lord say well done done thy good and thy faithful servant and I decree and I declare in the year of 2022 your servitude is about to be paid off you've been serving your family you've been serving your friends you've been serving your community you've been serving your everybody that's connected to you you even come to church and find God always put you in front of somebody that have a need right now and I came to let you know that your servitude is about to pay off look at me I'm so glad they didn't pay you you. I'm so glad they didn't pay you because heaven kept a record of everything that you did that was not even on your job description. I'm so glad you didn't stick to the script, but I'm so glad that every day you got up, you said, use me, Lord. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. What is it about God that he keep making you bless somebody, give somebody every servant under the sound of my voice? Hear me clearly. Even your praise is a servitude. Because when you praise God, chains are broken. What do you mean? Uh-uh. We ain't going to mess this up today. Am I back? Am I back? 
Watch me, watch me. When Paul and Silas were in the jail, the Bible said, and the two praised God. When the two praised God, they served the whole prison. The foundation was shaken, and every man's chains were broken, and the gates were open because two served. And I came to let you know right now, your praise is about to serve. When I tell you to give God a praise, something's about to break in here. Oh, Torebe under the I need the camera swing on you. I need somebody to see you in praise. Even looking at you bring deliverance. Your praise ain't always about you. He could use your praise to set everybody free. I need you to get your mind off yourself. I need you to tell God this one ain't even for me. This is for somebody else on the count of three. I need you to serve in your praise. Please hear me. This praise is not about you. This praise is for your children and your children's children. This praise is for Chicago. This praise is for our community. This praise is for our country. This praise I need you to get ready to serve. One, two, three, serve! Serve! Stop waiting on somebody to give it to you and you give it to somebody else. Sir! I praise God for those of you can't, that can't praise God right now. I praise God for those of you that are on your sick bed. I praise God for those of you that are in the hospital. I praise God for you that the enemy got you on lockdown. But I don't praise God for me. I praise God for your healing and for your deliverance and for your breakthrough. I praise God that your best days are ahead of you. One more time, release a praise. One, two, three, glory! It's about to pay off. Be not weary. Keep being nice. Keep giving. Keep sowing. Keep praying. Keep blessing those that curse you. Keep mending. Come on, I need you to get your servitude back. I need you to get your servitude back. I need you to get your mind off money. I need you to get your mind off position. I need you to get your mind off a title and for your glory. For your glory. Come on, let's serve your section. Turn and tell somebody this praise it's for you. This shout is for your house. This praise is for your marriage. Somebody in the house got to serve. Everybody can't be stubborn. Hey, wives, serve your husbands. Hey, husbands, serve your wife. Hey, children, serve your parent. Come on, if you are our families and friends, look at somebody and tell them, I got you today. I got you today. Come on, y'all. In that back. I need you to cover your section in that back that's called the first balcony I need the crazy praises to release a praise in your section this praise is for every business owner this praise is for every single person this praise is for every widow this praise is for every senior this praise is for every friend of mine. This praise is for everybody that's connected to me. This praise is for New Life Covenant. This 
praise is for everybody that's under the umbrella. This praise is to all be released. Same oil on me. How can I help you? This praise is for those that have known me 20 years. This praise is for those that have been with me all 18 years. This praise is for those that just showed up. Wait, this praise is for those that left me. Woo! Serve the Lord with gladness. Come on, everybody, get on your feet. Turn to tell somebody, how can I help you? Let me praise God for you. How can I push you? How can I lift you? How can I encourage you? This praise is for every single person. This praise is for every single woman. I'll cover you until your husband comes. I'll cover you until you get married. I'll cover you if you never get married. I got your back. This praise is for every brother. This praise is for every brother. You in a safe space. Not going to judge you. Not going to talk about you. Not going to tell your business. This praise is for every young man. This praise is for every... I need everybody to release the praise. But I need your praise not to be for you. One, two, three, go! Sir! 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 No shout, no shout. So put that on somebody. This praise is for every preacher. This praise is for every teacher. This praise is for every prophet. This praise is for every apostle. This praise is for every leader. Because being a leader ain't no joke. This praise is to push back the darkness. This praise is to go into the spirit realm and bind every devil that's out to shut you down. Sir! This praise is for everybody that stand on this stage. This praise is for everybody that sit on this stage. This praise is for every dancer. This praise is for every praise team member. This praise is for every choir member. This praise is for every band leader. This praise is for every stage worker. This stage, this praise is for every camera holder. This praise, sir. I'm a good friend to have. Come on, this ain't for you. But your blessing tied up in here somewhere. This praise ain't for you. But your blessing tied up in here somewhere. Your blessing is behind your apron. a circle. Come on, everybody say, my circle is tight. My intercessors are close. 
my Paris is amazing and my servitude is in order. Now I need you to open your mouth and say money is coming to me. I'm about to connect you with somebody who going to sponsor you. Come on here. Come on here. I want you to get this revelation. Can you bring this up on the screen? I want you to show you how money is coming. I need you to get this revelation. Everybody hear me. You have to hear me now. This is the servant speaking to Rebecca's family. And he says, the Lord has blessed my master abundantly. Rebecca, you don't even have to bring anything with you. What you're about to step into is about to make up for everything that you lacked. And he has become wealthy. Not rich, wealthy. There's a difference between being rich, because riches can run out. But wealth is for you, your children, and your children's children. <laughs> and he has given him sheep, cattle, silver, gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. Come on here, open your mouth and declare multiple streams are coming towards me. He's making me wealthy for somebody else. He's making me a CEO so that I could have a staff. And everybody, houses are going to eat from my obedience. Come on here. Come on here. Come on, go to the next one. I want to show this one. I want to show this one. I want you to get this line. My master's wife, Sarah, has born him a son in her own age. And he has given him everything. Pay attention to this. He owns. You really don't get everything until they die. What does it mean? He has the potential of wealth. Some of y'all looking at people for what they have now. But if you could get in the spirit, you'll see what they going to get later. You ready? Everybody say it. Wealth is coming towards me. Let's move real quick. Um, I have a candle here for worship. Um, because the Bible says, and the servant bowed down and worshiped God with nobody around him. And for somebody, you need to hear me, part of your box, worship calls your blessings in your direction. Your worship begin to pull things together in the spirit realm. Your worship, can I, can I be honest with you? Um, I met Anna Hannah at church. She got saved from a girl who's at that church right now. Joyce is a member of our church. They work together downtown at a bank. And they would, she got saved at work at some church down, what's the name of that church? That loop, that church downtown, you're a Methodist church downtown. They go in there and they get saved and she bring her to church. When I see her, first thing I saw was her parents. All right. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm staying in the house waiting to meet who I'm supposed to meet. Because I refuse to go outside looking for what's supposed to, to be in the house. She was working downtown. I was working at the county. She wasn't making that much. I wasn't making that much. But I know I felt wealth. You have to hear me. She had been through a bad divorce. He had taken everything. When she invited me over her house, she's sitting up in there with a sofa and a chair that she found in the alley but threw a sheet over it and tucked it down to make sure it was clean. I didn't see her for what she had. I'm talking about who you shall become. <laughs> then I will watch her at church. Watch me. I'm from the Pentecostal Church of God in Christ. We shout. We, we do all that. Anna joined church. She didn't know how to do all that. 
And I got the shower one time, she started jogging in place. I say, praise him. Because that look good to me, girl. Go on and praise him. She started. And she was on beat too. I said, shut up. And it made me want her more. Because your worship is attractive. Do me a favor, lift your hands and worship God like your box is full. Everybody stand, stand. I want you to make it. Look at me. I want you to be happy. Everything can't be drama. Everything can't be trauma. Some of y'all had a rough beginning and I need your ladder to be greater. So I need your circle to be tight. I need you to meet somebody at least who could pray. I need appearance to be good. I need servitude to be good. I need worship to be good. I need the potential of finances. The potential of finances. You working, you're not making that much, but it is a potential of what's headed in your direction. The last thing I picked up was a, a, um, something that you pour with because it's called sacrifice. You cannot be in any kind of relationships and it doesn't cost you something. It's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you your time. Cause some of y'all got some friends that you know when you call them, they, or they call you, listen, can we, can we get, I need to just talk to you for a few minutes. You know to sit down and get comfortable because Charlotte, I mean, somebody gonna talk a long, How many of y'all got people that you know it's, it's going to cost you some time? And I need you to be there. I'm going to need you to be there. L can, I, can I show the scripture on, on the sacrifice? On the sacrifice. Bring it up. So they call Rebecca and they ask her, will you leave this man, leave your comfort zone, and step into what you really don't know? And she said, I will. I will. And the Bible says, I'm, I'm done after this, you gotta get this one. Her family said, bring this last scripture, Laban and Bethuel answered, this is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other, cause it is obvious that this is God. And some of y'all, you about to meet people that it is going to be obvious that this is God. Can I? I'm done with this. So watch me. What if you have some people that only have a few of the characteristics? Then that means that you need to have the rest in your box. Because when we come together, but what if I have everything and they have nothing? This ain't from God. Because there was no click. And I'm telling some of y'all, in the spirit, you need to have time to shake some boxes to make sure that you're not with empty people. Watch me. Here we go. So I was like, Lord, how do we end this? I said, Lord, how do we end this? He says, I am about to fill some boxes. I'm about to put in my people what they need 
so that they could meet their connections. There's some of you all, you took your apron off. How many need you to put it back on? There's some of you all, you decreased in your worship, which means that your worship is not like it used to be. I'm going to need you to get your worship back. Some of y'all, you, you decreased in your prayer life. I'm going to need you to be not weary. I need you to keep your prayer life going. Uh, watch me, but I'm always in the seat for people. That's how you keep getting filled back up again because you keep pouring out when it comes to people. Fill me up till I overflow. I want over. I want over. Everybody, fill me up till I overflow. I want over. Come on, I need everybody to say that. If you want to be a good friend. Everybody say Fill me up Until I overflow Until I overflow I want to run I want to run over I want to run over So where do you lack? Where have you begun to fall short? One thing I know about God He'll never bless a fake He'll never bless a lie. You have to be broken and honest to come before God. You got to be like David. Oh, against thee and thee only have I sinned. Create within me a clean heart and renew. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Those of you that know that you've fallen short and your box is empty, or you could see some errors that you just need God to, can I get that? Can I get that? Get out of your seat. I only have a few minutes and meet me on the altar before we sing this song again. And I pray that the God that hears and answer begin to give you everything that you need, that he begin to fill you up. I pray that you get your servant's heart back. I pray that you get your joy back. I pray that you get your worship back. I pray that you get your prayer life back. I pray that you get your resources back. Come on here, some of y'all had wealth, but money, but you lost it. But God's about to fill you back up again because it's not about you. Come on, get up here. You know what needs to happen? Even in your house, in your marriage, take it out a little bit. Somebody got to pray in this house. We both can't be so mad that ain't nobody praying. Somebody better be the intercessor up in here. Somebody better be the worship in this house because we both cannot be in a bad spot. And some of y'all, you had a better prayer life than them in the beginning. What did they do to you to make you stop praying? And the Lord said, I need that back in your box. You had a, watch me, you was consistent when it came to worship. What happened in your marriage that stopped you from being consistent? So you mad at God because of what they did? I need your box back filled. And then stop demanding that they have what you have in your box. You're not talking to me, you're talking to God. You ready? Feel me? Feel me up yeah. Until I overflow I wanna run over Those online, those in the building Everybody say Come on, say it Come on, lift your hands like you want God to fill your box Everybody say Come on, anybody want your servitude back? Today I pray, I pray God that you would make our circle tight. 
I pray that you put the right people in our lives. I pray that God, you ignite the fire of prayer in us. Can you please let the intercessor get back in their seat? Can there be an intercessor in every house? I pray for our appearance, God, that you clothe us in righteousness and holiness and that we look like everything you told us to look like. And God, can we have a servant's heart? Teach us to continue to pour. Come on, everybody say, God, let me keep pouring. Let me keep pouring. And God, I pray that the finances be released and I pray that the worship be real and never let me be tired sacrificing. Come on, for a few seconds, can I hear your worship? For a few seconds. For a few seconds. For a few seconds. Hold the music. Hold the music. Hold the music. No, hold the music. Whatever you lack, he has it. Whatever you lack, he has it. Give me five seconds. No, give me 10 of you worshiping God. And I pray that in this 10 seconds, what you lack, you be filled. 10. Come on, wives. Get back on the wall. Come on, husbands. Get back in your post. Come on, single people. Don't stop evolving. Your labor is not in vain. Five, four, three, To be healed, be healed, be healed. Everything you went through was to fill your box, and God is about to be glorified. In all things, give thanks, for this is the will of God. In the count of three, I need you to release a praise for what everything you possess. Look at me. You don't possess it all, but I need you to praise God for what you do have. And as you praise God for what you do have, he'll either begin to increase your box or bring you in contact with those that have what you lack. And I need to meet the people that lack what I don't have. No jealousy, no intimidation. I am confident in who I am in, who I am. I need you to get ready to release the praise for what you possess, for what you possess. On the count of three, the praise is on you. I promise you, somebody, your box is about to get heavier. Somebody, you're about to be filled back up again. Somebody, you're about to get what you never had. One, two, three, go! Be filled! Be filled! Be filled! You are a good friend! Be filled! You are amazing! Be filled! You are about to attract like-minded people! Be filled! Be not weary! Be not weary! Lift up your head! O ye gates! So the King of glory can come right on in! Lift up your head, O ye gates! Be filled! Get back on your post! Be the intercessor. Be the sponsor. Be filled. You are amazing. 
You're a good parent. You're a good friend. You're an amazing intercessor. You always giving. That's why you never run out. You're always pouring. That's why God always fill you back up again. Come on, get it back, Sarah. Come on, Sarah, get it back. Come on, Sarah, there you go. Tap in. Come on, Sarah, you're there. You're the one that bring people together. You have the magnetic personality. I need you not to let anybody cut off your personality. There you go. Get your smile back. Hey, hey, get you back. You got lost in this thing somewhere. He's making you. There you go. Glory. Coming on your way to your seat. There has to be some physical contact. I need you to test three people and tell them, you got it, you got it. Shake they box. Shake they box.
personality. to hear the sound of boxes in the building release the praise right there hold on can y'all hear me i say i need to hear the sound of some boxes release the praise right here don't change on me don't change on me don't change on me Listen. Listen carefully. Nobody walk out the building. Listen carefully. There are at least 10 of you in the building and another 10 online. Number one, somebody you need to, you need God to fill your box up because you are a box full of hot mess. And I know hot mess because I used to be a box of hot mess. We all used to be that, that messy box. Then there's some of y'all, you're saved, but you don't have a church home. You have no one to cover your box. You have no one to add to your box. And I feel you in the building, you've been disappointed from where you came from, but being out here by yourself is not good. So I am like the servant, I came to get you. If you know that I'm talking to you, don't make me beg you to be happy. Get out of your seat and start walking towards me right now. Move. Get up and start coming towards me. Where you at? Start walking towards me. Start praying. Get up out of your seat and start moving. Even if you're in the balcony, come out the balcony and come towards me right now. Oh, y'all gonna make me go in the spirit. Y'all gonna literally make me go in the spirit. Hold the music. There's one coming. There's some more. Move. Come on, bro. When you come, your family will shift. So I didn't just come after you. I'm coming after your house. Everyone stand to your feet so make sure we don't step over you. One thing that God never does, he never lies to me. And I know that you're in this building. Hear me clearly. Timing is everything. And some of y'all, if you don't come now, I can't guarantee that you'll be able to come again. Timing is everything. Get out of your seat and walk towards me right now. Move. Move. I don't want nobody looking at me. Ain't nobody thinking about you. Get up here. Get up here right now. Okay. There's another young man coming. So we about to go at the brothers. Stand right here. Close your eyes. Why you go so hard, Pastor Hannah? Because I'm trying to empty out hell. And if I don't know nothing else, the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And for some of y'all, the enemy has been after your house. He has been after you with everything he has. You better hear me clearly. When you come up here, you're not just coming up here just so you can be seen. You come up here to get God, and you come up here to get back up. And some of y'all, you cannot do this thing called life by yourself. Get out of your seat and walk towards me now. All eyes are closed. Ain't nobody looking at you. Come now. I can go in the spirit. Some of y'all been having suicidal thoughts and the enemy been telling you it ain't worth living for. Get up here because you're about, your box is about to be filled with accountability. Young adults, teenagers, if you're in this building, I'll count to 10. I know you in here. Move, 10.
nine, eight, there's one, there's two, there's three, seven, six, five, four, there's another, three, Supposed to be four more people up here. I'm a G in the spirit. Turn and ask somebody, are we waiting on you? If they tell you yes, you bring them to me. This is a 911 situation. And this is an emergency. Because if we get you, we get your house. Ten more seconds. I'm moving. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You can be seated. For those that are up here, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to turn towards me. Turn towards me. Um, you're gonna follow a gentleman in the back. I'm gonna set four, but I'm gonna stop. I'll stop. You're gonna follow this gentleman right here. We're gonna take him right. We're gonna pray with you. We're gonna get some information. And we okay, we got another one coming. I'm missing four. I'm missing two. I'm missing three. Are you coming down that stairs? You coming towards me? If you ain't coming towards me, don't walk. Come on, go on up there, come on. Here come my three. I need y'all to praise God like the devil just got defeated. I need you to praise God like the devil just got defeated. Hallelujah. <laughs> 